Hello, hackers. Welcome to Pwn College. I'm Jan, and today we're going to go on to talk about proving the absence of cybersecurity. Right? We talked about security models, how we might start reasoning about them, a framework for this. But uh, at the end of the day, how do we actually reason about something being secure or not? Right? If we have a technology, some website, something, uh, some application, etc., cetera, um, that we want to say, hey, this is secure. Right? Another way of stating that is saying, hey, it has no security issues, no security flaws, no vulnerabilities. It's very difficult to prove a negative, right? Um, it's not impossible. There uh, are examples um, in cybersecurity of systems that were proven to be secure, but this is far from kind of the, the, the typical case. And uh, generally speaking, you get a very good idea that something is secure, a good hunch, or at least a, 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 a fuzzy feeling by trying to break it and failing. And so here's how um, a real world case of this went in the cryptographic world, right? In 1997, the United States uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, uh, wanted to pick a new modern encryption standard, right? The old encryption standard, DES, standard for data encryption standard, was uh, kind of considered to be pretty broken, had various downsides, and um, they, uh, the, the community wanted something new, right? And so in the absence of being able to pick some algorithm, have a proof that it is all nice and correct, they made a competition. And they said, okay, they actually had a series of competitions. They had people submit algorithms, uh, the community, other people, other cryptographers try to break these algorithms uh, and those would get eliminated. And the rest, kind of surviving algorithms that could not be broken with some sort of an example that, hey, here's something that's encrypted and I can decrypt it without having the key, etc. cetera. Uh, the rest were judged on vibes, right? There's a vote held. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think on that? I mean, there were other proper techno properties. Uh, well, you know, how they could be used, uh, uh, what their um, uh, performance was, et cetera, et cetera. All this came into play, but but really, and then people just went with gut feelings. They tried first to eliminate insecure options by coming up with actual dem demonstrable attacks, and then went with gut feelings, right? And uh, this is, uh, oh my God, that's supposed to be an arrow. I'm going to pause the recording and fix it. One sec. All right. And we're back with a fixed screen. Okay. So um, w w what we kind of get from this is unlike uh, proving that something is secure, proving that it's insecure is actually very straightforwardly doable right? All we have to do is find a specific vulnerability like the cryptographers found in various encryption standards that were proposed. Say, here it is. Boom. Okay. What's the problem? The problem is very depressingly often you will find a vulnerability and unless someone is actually waiting and hoping for you to find that vulnerability in the case of NIST during that competition, because they really wanted to eliminate as many vulnerable algorithms as they could, typically you'll go to someone you say, I have a vulnerability and say, I don't know. I don't believe you. You didn't, you, you know, you just think it's a vulnerability. Said, and, and this happens to us and, and our research lab here at ASU all the time, right? Uh, there is a nice solution for this, which um, a famous hacker uh, by the handle uh, that goes by the handle of FX um, came up with this uh, concept or quotified this concept that you can't argue with a root shell. Root, the typical Linux administrative user, um, is uh, typically not uh, accessible to normal users of a system. But if you find a critical enough vulnerability that allows you through an exploit to achieve root privileges 
and you demonstrate that to someone who's trying to deny the existence of a vulnerability, then you are um, typically off to a good start in convincing them that there is a vulnerability. And this is right now in the realm of like, okay, hackers creating exploits, but really what we're talking about is a proof, right? So think back to geometry, right? Or uh, discrete mathematics might have been more recent for you. In geometry, discrete mathematics, et cetera, you built proofs, right? A proof has an axiom and some statements, some theorem that you have to prove. The axiom, uh, set of axioms, rather, might be you know Euclid, Euclid's uh, typical axioms for geometry. They might be uh, whatever axioms in whatever space you are um, uh, working in. You have a theorem that says, okay, hey, look, here's a, this configuration of shapes, angles, and, and, and so on. Prove that angle A is congruent to angle B um, for geometry. And then uh, the process is to use various methods, various mathematical proving methods to build up inferences, different truths that you have proved along the way until finally, boom, you have the proof. Or you have a statement that contradicts the proof. And that is what we are looking for here. We are looking for the statement that contradicts the theorem, not the proof, the statement that contradicts the theorem, where our theorem are, uh, is that something, our security model holds, right? So our statement to proof is a security model derived from that CIA, uh, those CIA properties we talked about in a previous lecture. Um, our axioms are the piece of software deployed however it's meant to be deployed. And in the case of the phone calls platform, it is the challenge that you're working with, right? The functionality of Linux and so on. And the methods in the mathematical world, you use various uh, methods and, 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 and uh, proof types and stuff. Here in cybersecurity, you use different vulnerabilities, different hacking techniques, to get step by step by step farther and farther and farther until you can uh, demonstrate clearly and undeniably that the security model is broken. All right, what's the phone college security model? It's actually much simpler than in the real world. In the real world, you often have to really argue with people, does this or does this not violate the security model, et cetera, et cetera. In Pwn college, much more straightforward. Right. All challenges in Pwn College have the security model that the hacker user must not be able to manipulate the challenge into disclosing the contents of the slash flag file. Confidentiality, only thing that matters in Pwn College. Sometimes the challenges will, you will achieve the uh, um, uh, compromise of, of confidentiality by messing with integrity, et cetera, et cetera, of course. But the security model is that you can't get at the contents of the slash flag file. That means that in order to prove that a challenge is insecure, which is your job in almost every challenge, um, some challenges instead want you to write something, want you to pull off some specific command, et cetera, et cetera. But all the real security challenges in the platform all you have to do is read the contents of the flag file. How you achieve this is challenge specific, right? Different challenges have different vulnerabilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you use those vulnerabilities to go step by step by step to get the contents of flag. That's your proof. Your proof is an exploit, an exploit that you write and carry out to violate the security of the challenge, get the flag, Submit the flag into that beautiful submission form and get the points. All right. Go do that.